Okay, so now that we've looked at how to calculate a z-score and what a z-score means, we're going to look at how z-scores can be used to compare values that are on different scales. So for the first example, Taylor and Carson took different college entrance exams. Taylor took the ACTs and scored a 29, while Carson took the SATs and scored a 1325. The mean score on the ACT is a 21 with a standard deviation of 5.4. The mean score on the SAT is a 1060 with a standard deviation of 195. Who did relatively better on their college entrance exam? So these are on different scales, the ACT and the SAT. The ACT is out of 36, and the SAT is out of, I don't know, but not 36, okay? So we wanna know who did better, and the only way we can really compare those is to calculate their z-scores. So we're gonna calculate two z-scores here. We're gonna do one for Taylor, so I'm going to do a Z, and then I'm going to put a little T below it so that I know that this is Taylor's Z-score. So she scored a 29, and her test, which was the ACT, had a mean of 21 and a standard deviation of 5.4. So using our Z-score formula, I'm going to do 29 minus 21 divided by 5.4. Remember, we want to make sure we do the 29 minus 21 first get that answer, which is 8, and then divide that by 5.4. And I get 1.48. So there's Taylor's z-score. So she is almost one and a half standard deviations above the mean for the test that she took. So now let's do the same thing for Carson. Carson took the SAT. He scored a 13.25. The SAT mean was 1060, and the standard deviation was 195. So we take Carson's score of 1325 minus 1060 divided by 195. Again, make sure you get the result of the 1325 minus 1060 first, which is 265, then do the division. So we get one point. 3, 6, when we round that properly. So now, if I were to draw a bell curve, assuming these are bell-shaped, and they should be with us calculating z-scores. Okay, the middle is going to be 0. The mean has a z-score of 0. So Taylor is over here at 1.48. And Carson is at 1.36. So Taylor has a higher z-score, meaning she has a higher relative score. So she did better on her entrance exam. So Taylor scored higher Taylor scored relatively higher on her entrance exam. meaning Taylor could possibly get into a better school than Carson because she has a higher score. So let's look at another example. Miles and Athena ran the same half marathon. Miles completed the race in 100 minutes. The mean time for males was 113 minutes with a standard deviation of 12 minutes. Athena completed the race in 114 minutes. The mean time for females was 129 with a standard deviation of 15. Who ran faster relative to their gender? So now for this one, we can't just compare their times because different genders have different abilities. I'm hesitant to say that as you can tell, but it's true. So for miles, it took him 100 minutes the mean for males was 113, and the standard deviation was 12. So I'm going to calculate a z-score for miles. So he had a score of 100 minus the mean of 113 over 12. So again, 100 minus 113 gives us 13 divided by 12 is 1.08. Oh, negative 1.08. I'm sorry, that 
13 should be negative, so negative 1.08. And now we're gonna look at Athena. She completed the race in 114 minutes. The mean for females was 129, and the standard deviation for females was 15. So for Athena, we do 114 minus 129 divided by 15. So we get negative 15 divided by 15. So that's going to be negative 1. So if I draw a bell curve to just kind of approximate where these fall, and this step of doing the bell curve isn't necessary, but it can be helpful for another visualization. So Miles is down here, maybe right here at negative 1.08. And Athena is here at negative 1. So now if we're looking for who ran faster, we're looking for who has the lower relative time. Because if you run faster, that means it takes you less time to complete the race. So because Miles has the lower z-score, he ran faster relative to his gender. So Miles ran relatively faster than Athena. And those are two examples of how we can use z-scores to compare.